Or you better be, Kevin, because we, Binge Express, are about to come for you and team up with the Wet Bandits. But before we start, let me highlight that this is just a fun video. Now with that said, let us have a look on how we could beat the Kevin in Home Alone. Let me start off by saying that impersonating a police officer to gather intel about the household you target is a pretty clever idea. But in all honesty, stuff like that doesn't work anymore. Not that I've tried, it's just a guess. I mean, imagine a random person, whoever he is, inside your house, uninvited, waiting for you to have a moment to speak. That's just weird. Most people would shoot that person. So, I guess 30 years ago, things might have been a bit different. But, if we look at it from the perspective of our thieves, it doesn't make sense. Because they are definitely able to increase their upcoming heist success rate by a lot that way. On the other hand, you also take a big risk since you openly show your face. And having a gold tooth doesn't really help your appearance stay low key. So to pull that up, Marv might have been a better choice. Go check it out. Now? Okay, maybe not. Maybe not Marv, but anyway. Harry does generally a good job here. I mean, look at his costume. It's pretty spot on. Especially when we compare it to the real officer we get to see later in the movie. And since this household is extremely chaotic, I mean, there is no doubt that that helps too in keeping a low profile. Now, however chaotic this place might be though, it doesn't make up the following fact. You see, I have checked out the neighborhood of our house and found out that the house is located in Vinetka, Illinois. Turns out the local police station is only about 800 meters away from the McAllisters. So this fact alone would convince me to either stay away completely or at least continue much more cautiously. In any way, let's follow Harry and Marv the infamous wet bandits and see where they could have avoided errors and win the epic showdown between them and the Kevin. Merry Christmas. When Harry and Marv arrive at the house the first time, there are several things I would have done differently. First of all, parking this very sketchy looking car on the parking lot of the house you want to rob is probably not the smartest thing to do. I think we can all agree to that. But you see, it isn't that simple, because you also don't want to park the car too far away, because if you are in need for a sudden escape, you'll have a problem. So perhaps the best idea would have been to park the car in proximity, but not directly in front of the house, like Marvin Harry, and make it look like a van of some sort of service company, which they technically did, I know, but insufficiently in my opinion. What I mean is, their outfit sucked, <laughs> they didn't look like plumbers, and since they generally rob at night, perhaps they could have additionally added 24 hours available or something similar onto the side of their van. Crumbies up. <laughs> Furthermore, I would have insisted on only one of us attempting the robbery while one of us stays behind. And there are multiple reasons for that. But first and foremost, because police patrols are likely to happen around here. After all, the police station isn't far away it is holiday season and this is an upscale neighborhood. However, all of this happens back in the early 90s, so communication was much more complicated than it is now. There were not many mobile phones available back then, and if there were any, they were so expensive it simply would have not been possible to afford for most people. And in our case here, we would have needed at least two devices. Look, I've done some research for you guys and it turns out that the Microtech X9800 from Motorola was one of the only ones available back then, which would have been a great choice if it wasn't for the hefty price tag of around $3000. That's like a 16 inch MacBook Pro these days. So to bridge the communication gap following this strategy, you may use walkie talkies instead, which were already used recreationally back in the early 90s. But let's talk about the reason why you clicked on this video. Alright people, for the sake of this video, let us forget that Kevin is just a kid, alright? He stands for those who cannot stand for themselves. He is Gandalf, facing the Byrock. Neo, facing Agent Smith. He is Kevin, the man of the house. I'm the man of the house. So, 
Our two goovies here make their way to Kevin's house. But before they arrive, please allow me to tell Marv that I like his sense of fashion. I really do. But his Italian shoes are a little out of place here. It's late December for God's sake. How about some sturdy Timberlands for that extra grip and stability? We all know he will need it. After announcing themselves, for whatever reason, they finally split up, which is a phenomenal idea. I mean, look, fighting Kevin is a tough battle. We all know that. Hello. But your advantage is two versus one. Let's be honest here, guys. If there were two Gandalfs versus one Byrock, we all would have rooted for the fire demon. That's just how things work. It's simple math. If you can't outsmart people, you have to outnumber them. That's why every zombie movie has zombie hordes. Anyway, Marv, just be careful. Tread lightly. It seems like Harry struggles the same though. So it might not have been the shoes. Although, hey, Timberlands would do the job. I guarantee it. Timberland, if, if you're watching this video, you know, reach out. Seems like ice is not the only enemy here. Seriously, I have never seen a glowing red doorknob, even in 2020. And by the way, you don't really want to leave your fingerprints on it? I have seen George Clooney and his friends doing fancy stuff, and apparently you want to wear gloves when stealing things. Burning away your fingerprints would do it too. Well anyway, let's check out Marv. How is he doing? Did you know that the average iron weighs 3 pounds? Now you do. I researched it so you don't have to, ever again. So when Marv tries to get up the stairs, his choice of shoes once again screws him over to the point where he ends up barefoot. I told you, this would not have happened if he wore the right shoes. But let's put aside their obvious bad choice of fashion here and focus on their reaction time. Because that too seems to be on the lower end of the spectrum. And we all know by now that playing video games 15 hours a day is a possible way to increase one's reaction time. And since Pac-Man was released back in the early 80s, the options were there. Simple truth, Harry. Simple truth. But anyway, they finally make it into the house. Harry more like a SWAT team breaking into a house to get that peaceful stoner. Well, congratulations Harry, you're in now. And the next trap isn't precisely the worst one. I mean, look, so far you got burned twice while Marv got hit by a three pound iron in free fall. So having glue all over your face while feathers are raining down on you is a pretty comfortable thing. Unless it's evil super glue, then, well, then you better go for the nail polish remover straight away. Meanwhile, Marv, this poor tall guy, finds his way into the house through the open window. And I know what you guys are thinking now. Why don't you look where you step, Marv? Well, look, he's a tall guy, okay? It is not easy for us to realize what goes down on the lower levels of experience. So we really can't blame him for that. What we should feel, though, is empathy. Because we all know what it feels like stepping barefoot on tiny, evil, sharp objects. All right, let's assess the situation here real quick, guys. We are finally inside. We know that there are booby traps all over the place, so we should be a bit careful. The goal is the 8 year old on the second floor. Now honestly, if it was up to me, I would just loot the ground floor and make for an escape. Simple and easy. And since most traps were already activated down here, there isn't much more to overly pay attention to. But well, in the movie, they chase Kevin regardless. But I kind of get it. It's like the boss battle you can't beat, but your ego doesn't allow you to back off. Many of you will understand. They just can't let go. I'm up here, you morons! So chasing Kevin upstairs, they fall backwards on tiny cars, um, causing me to lose my breath as well for a few moments. But they get back up and, well, get hit by paint buckets. Yep, those look like they hold about 3 liters of paint. I'd probably prefer stepping on Legos than getting hit with that. Alright, so when Marv almost catches Kevin and Kevin dodges the grab by putting Bart's tarantula on Marv's face, I kind of felt sorry for the spider, okay? I mean, look, what can I say? I'm, I'm an animal simp. Animals are cool. And, well, some of them are tasty too. However, I am more impressed with that scene though. Because all tarantulas are venomous to some extent. 
So having one on your face and screaming like Marth does is kind of a risky thing, isn't it? I guess things were a bit more raw back in the early 90s. So Kevin escapes to his tree fortress using his homemade zipline, which we all agree is one of the coolest things ever. At this point though, it would have been much better for our thieves to stay behind and well, do what they came to do. And if you still want to catch the Kevin, you should have split up. Togging yourselves over the zipline is just a bad idea to begin with. Plus, it looks like it's very high up as well. Falling from this height can easily result in fractures. Not if you wear Timberlands, of course. But they were lucky. They survived their fall and chased Kevin to the point where they actually caught him. Just bad that this is Kevin's hood and not theirs. <laughs> So, what is the verdict here? First of all, if they didn't lose their goal out of sight, which was looting the darn place, they could have done so, at least to some extent, and escaped successfully thereafter. That is the first thing. Then the second and even more important thing is, don't underestimate anyone that bears the name Kevin. With that said, my dear friends, I have a last message for you all. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Thanks for watching, leave a like and subscribe as always if you enjoyed it, leave a comment if you have any inputs, it's beautiful to do this for you guys, it's a lot of fun, we have so many more updates coming soon, thank you very much and bye bye.